let me tell you that the model of quantum physics is not adequate to explain this. And as a matter of fact, the latest developments in science are beginning to reveal a quasi-obsolescence of quantum physics. And that is the idea of the particle around the particle, subdividing from the particle, or building up greater conglomerate masses in a relative time and space situation. And, of course, Albert Einstein was the first one to even question, to begin to teasingly make suggestions that quantum physics didn't have it all, or that it would have to be rethought at some point in the future. He made constant references to quantum trickery, especially when he would suggest that time moves not just in a linear direction, and not just forward, but also backwards, and probably in a circular direction, if not in a completely random direction. And that a lot of what we're looking at in science is what we're expecting to discover. In other words, we put our mental image out first, and then we go to try and see our mental image illustrated in reality. Well, Niels Bohr was a Danish philosopher, and he's king of the quantum theory. But here's what he says. Science is about... Well, first of all, in this quote I'm reading to you, he dismissed any attempt to lift the quantum veil as meaningless. In other words, to him, it's pointless to look beyond the quantum veil. There is nothing there. That's why I said we're going to need a new model to look at, because if you look at quantum mechanics, the way it was explained by the king of quantum mechanics, there is a veil. And we don't have the answers beyond the veil, and he actually says it is meaningless to look beyond the veil. Does that remind you a little bit of those who said the Earth is flat? It's kind of meaningless to travel out to the edge and might fall off? Well, because he said that science was about the results of experiments. And since the experiments are first formulated in our mind, that's as far as our mind can go right now. Yes. In other words... This is the question I want to really get at. Okay. Is the creation of this beyond the veil? I'll see if this makes any sense at all. Okay. Let's say you have space, and you don't have... There's nothing in that space. There's stars. There's no stars. There's no... There's not even... There's nothing. But you know that with nothing, there has to be something. Because if there's nothing, there has to be something. So on that blackness, on that emptiness, there was the vacuum of space that acted against each other, which was the drag of space. Right? So would you say that within that drag, within that pressure that the vacuum is creating on that space, some kind of maybe from what we look down to into, which is the atom of the tea particle, maybe a free electron or something were to start... was manifested somehow, somewhere, and it started to gain motion through this, like, attraction. So it started to attract more of these free electrons to itself, which started spinning and spinning and spinning, gaining more and more power against the vacuum, which, in effect, exploded into the universe, the bodies, the big yes, all the potential that we know of as the universe, which is far from seeing. That created infinity. So would you say that before... This is the creation of what we know as the universe, God, the force that is in the world today. Before this was created, it was just like a canvas. There's nothing on it. The artist didn't put anything on it yet. And then the artist had the idea, the concept, to say, I'm going to put something there. So maybe I'm just saying, potentially, from another dimension, even beyond that veil, the artist said, I'm going to make something on this canvas. And that's where the spark of creation, the creation of this universe came from. It's very plausible. That's a very plausible explanation. 
destination. And you're coming, you're coming at this from a very creative viewpoint that uh, is, uh, did, did you all hear what, what he was saying? Or at least enough of it? Um, you see, you're examining what is. You're, you're really thinking about what is through what could be, through what you could experience personally as yourself, rather than creating an idea and then going to prove it. In quantum theory, the veil is actually the edge of what we can preconceive. That's, that's basically what the edge, what the veil is. The veil is the veil of our limitation. And uh, this is the trap we got into when we, uh, when we postulated a theory and forgot that the theory was not reality, and then we went out to prove the theory instead of to examine reality. It's not like this. Is there a God in another universe that had a child, and he called him God, and he's our father? Uh-huh. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I'm getting there. Just bear with me for a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm, it's just, that's a big subject. 